Mostly right. military dudes, yeah. Nice. Yeah, because I, I didn't know this, but apparently, like, military installations are crazy fucking haunted. Who knew? Well, you know, death and destruction and things like that yeah. tend to cause problems. Yeah, I don't know what would happen with the YouTube feed there. All of a sudden, it just randomly crapped out and then went live again. <laughs> who, knows? who knows? I got a message like, what's going on? Well, if Things you were happen. watching this on UTech, you probably wouldn't be having these problems. Just saying. Yeah. So I, I, off off camera here, I have a laptop. I'm trying to monitor the fucking chats. He's, he's checking the stuff out. Yeah. So Sandman, how you been, man? I mean, it's been over a year since we had you on the show. What have you got going on? Nothing much. Just trying to keep my uh, channel going. You know, the the yeah. wonders of YouTube never cease to amaze me. <laughs> what is their new uh, psyop that they got you going with now to do with comments? I think. Yeah, like every single comment um, that's posted, I have to actively make it like live. I have to go through the comment section and go like, I, you know, approve, 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 approve. Wow. And, you know, and it's so funny. It's like. The first wow. hour, you get like five or ten guys all saying first, 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 first. Like, no, you're not first. <laughs> you're you're like tenth, but you can't see it until I validate it, right? Well, I, what I'm what That's I'm insane. thinking is maybe you could set up like a gilded chat, or yeah. use locals, and then just on your videos on YouTube, you're like, you know, I don't, I cannot moderate all this stuff. You need to make, you leave a comment, go to locals and leave a comment there, or something like that. There's got to be a workaround. There's got to be a better way. Yeah, I, know, I, I could set up a script or you know to basically approve all comments. But the problem is, if you approve all comments, then they're going to start posting stuff that's you know yeah like they'll stupid, post shit right? to deliberately get you in trouble. Yeah, because we're all guilty by proxy, but only if you vote the wrong way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, like even even uh, Canada's prime minister hopeful Pierre Polyver, you know, yeah. just because he used the MGTOW tag, now he's uh, you know in the hot seat in Parliament. What the fuck? I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> is that your uh, Chinese or his Vietnamese laptop. girlfriend? Apparently, MGTOW.TV is talking to him. Mute your computer, Pop. <laughs> I'm looking for... This is a brand new computer. So Son of a bitch! I was only supposed me. to... I mean, it's better that than, than Orn Pay. I mean, there could be a lot worse. Things happen, man. What do you want? I mean, next thing you know, you got, you know, Bang Bang with Fang Fang over there. Yes, please spank it. Please pull the bra, smack the ass. You know that... I don't know where the mute is. Just keep doing thing. what you can. Uh, well, it's a PC, so probably down on the right, click the I thing that it. looks like a speaker, yeah, yeah. drag it down to zero. <laughs> down to zero. <laughs> Pop's having a boomer moment, and for once, it's not me. Hey, hey! hey, hey. And he's not even a boomer. <laughs> What's he talking about? He's Gen Xer, er, man. He's an early boomer. Early, yeah, early boomer. boomer. He's, like, he's, he's is, a late boomer. A <laughs> brand, this is a brand new gaming computer. So you yeah, Biden's going booming his pants every day now. Yeah, you know, I bought I bought a new so, quote unquote gaming computer. You know, works a little bit faster for rendering videos. I haven't upgraded my computer in ten years. So I go to the what? computer store, and uh, you know, my, my computer is working fine. Put wow. a new graphics card in, added a hard drive. You know, and eventually I was like, okay, it's time to get a new computer. So I get a new computer, and they're like, all you get is half a terabyte of a hard drive. I'm like, what? Like last time I bought a new computer it was like three terabytes. What, what are you people doing? Right, well, I didn't realize they shrunk the terabyte size on computers so much. Well, the, the one I have here, I uh, it has it came with one terabyte uh, solid state drive, and then I went and put in two more terabytes solid state drives and upgraded the RAM. Hopefully, it'll keep working because mm. you know things happen. <laughs> you do. He's booming it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Could be, Could worse. be worse. Could be a lot worse. But what do you say we jump into tonight's fun time subject? All right. Now, first of all, all right, you got to do your deal. For the men out there, if you have been playing around with a punani <laughs> on a regular basis, sooner or later, the punani is going to rotate you out. Now, if that happens before she starts getting hot beef injections at the same time you're doing it, great. No, that's not great. It's bad. You bad. want it to happen, you know, if she dumps you and then moves on to somebody else. Is it cheating? I don't know. But the way I look at it is this. Yeah. And uh, this, I'm speaking from experience here. This is exactly what was going through my fucking head when I found out my wife was getting a force to dick run through her. Just before or after the Literally, GPS I'm like, was installed. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, Woo! this is the equivalent of like 
somebody random person walking up and spitting in my fucking mouth and there's nothing i can do about it oh god because i had no idea that i, that I was this was going on because yeah. i was i had a, a tbi and it took a good year and a half to uh you know depending get out of the fog. on depending on what you had been doing with your ex in the interim could have been a lot more than spitting in your mouth <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah, you are correct that, that could have been you know, very... it's like you're it's like you're garbage picking at the Coney Island and cleaning yeah. up after somebody else's coconut cream pie. No, if, oh, if you God, find out I mean... that she's been cheating on you, then you need to go out to the best Japanese restaurant you can find, take her there, and uh, order for her. You know, women like men went to order for them, so order some shiraku for her. Shiraku. And, yeah, that's the that's con- called uh, fish sperm, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> Nope. Well, I mean, well, not for her, not for you, right? You like, are what and, you and eat, then, and then, <laughs> and then, you know, let her eat it, you know, and then tell her what it is, and watch the horror on her face, and then tell her, I know you've been cheating too, you know. Yeah. So you like you like having someone else's, you know, junk on your face. So I thought I'd give you some more. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. You're such an asshole. Well, you are what you eat, dick. But my thing is this. All right. Now, there's a lot of dudes out there who cheat on their ladies. That's fucked up. Yeah. Now, listen. If you're a dude and you're not into it anymore, fucking leave. All right. Now, if you've been in a long-term marriage and the bedroom fun has gone away and you need to do your thing, I understand that. I don't really condone it, but it is what it is. Every man is their own person. But uh, men today will cheat. Oh, as, as long as they can. And the reason they do that is women are throwing away the punani for free. Yeah. Like, quite literally. It, it's, it's like, yeah, well, yeah, you meet a woman. Hey, hey, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here's my number. Give me a call. Send me a text. Da, da, da. You talk to her a couple of times. Hey, come over at 1030. We'll Netflix and chill. Okay. We all know what that is, <laughs> right? We all know what that is, yeah. Uh, that means... She's going to come over, you're going to watch 20 minutes of the movie, and then you're delivering right to the warehouse. Pretty much. Speaking of multiple women, have you guys heard that uh, polyamorous marriages are now technically legal in New York State? So you can have a a marriage between three people, and the judge will, you know, figure out what to do with the assets if that marriage breaks up. I I can't (laughs) wait to see that ball of worms decompose in divorce court. It's going to be comedy gold. (laughs) I would love to be in the courtroom for the first uh, polyamory divorce. (laughs) They're going to settle this in the octagon, like half of these (laughs) polyamory couples. You know what? That would be hilarious. I go watch it take place, and then I make a stop motion animation at a modeling clay of what happened in the court and Oh Pop, my God! Pop's gonna be playing with his action figures like Dark Helmet and fucking Spaceballs. I, I don't know, man. I'm just trying to come up with some better, uh, uh, some comedy skits and stuff. Lone Star. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, have, have you watched? There's a there's a stop motion animation. I think it's from the 70s or 80s, and they've got like Samuel Clemens, or Mark Twain, and these kids, and then there's this weird demon shows up. Mm-hmm. And it like freaks out all the kids. I can't remember what it's called, but you, you, should, you guys should take a look at that. Let's see if I can find it. Well, no, no. There's really? another one where they remember Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Of course. Well, there's one where Rudolph shows up and like mows everyone down with a machine gun and says he's <laughs> taken over. And oh, it is fucking oh, hilarious. That's what happens when you bully the wrong kid in school. I'm just saying. But the thing is, is like when I was a kid, I would kill. To watch those shows, those figuratively, shows. not literally, of course. Yeah, like I, I literally loved them. And then when I, you know, a few years later, when YouTube came on and I saw that, I was like, <gasps> I fucking just crushed my whole childhood, man. It's called The Mysterious Stranger ah, from The Adventures of Mark Twain. Stranger that that probably has a porn version. It might. Yeah. The Mysterious Stranger. Listen, virtually every movie out there has a porn. Um, yeah, I know equivalent. rule 34 is if you can think of it, there's porn of yes. it, but uh, there's got to be another rule, which, you know, like if the title is suggestive enough, there has to be a porn of it. Yeah, we need to do another man rules video. <laughs> Are you guys still doing your uh, like fully scripted whiteboard videos? Uh, it's been a while because things have been so crazy busy. But uh, as we move into the off season, we're going to be 
talking with the supporters, uh, wow. a couple of other creators who have been giving us a hand, like Billy Von Baum, and hopefully try to get things worked out now that all the equipment <laughs> is over here, especially with Pop. I'm going to get him up to speed on everything to where it'll free me up to get back to doing those regularly. Cause I mean, I, I've got... It's been uh, a lot. Let's see. I, wanted, I got a bunch of requests from guys who are like, hey, look, Pop, your videos are great, but can you make some for the young guys, 18 to 24? I'm like, okay. I could do that. What do you want it on? The guy's like, well, you know, uh, I got some nephews that are thinking of getting married, and we mm-hmm. should put together a anti-marriage video. So I'm, I wrote up, sell me marriage. <laughs> That's going to be good. And the other one sell I did marriage. was, uh, <laughs> uh, it's basically why men dick think. Well. Yeah, look, I mean, we're listen, a slave to our hormones from in the like beginning, you 13 are, to 33. Until you have the proper head heart migration, we talked about. Yeah, that. it takes a little while. And some men never grow out of it. I know men who yeah. are older than you who still dick think. Yeah, or those guys who've been. It's pretty sad to see, actually. It mm-hmm. is. I, the, I, if I run into somebody who's been married multiple times, I feel sorry for them. Yeah. I really do. Did, did you guys see uh, what happened with uh, with Depp going after that uh, lawyer? His lawyer, now... yeah. What what happened with that? He's dating his lawyer now, the one what that helped it, him win the case. Idiot. Like... She dumped her husband for Depp. Oh my! God. And she's got two young kids, <sighs> and she left to be with Depp. And Depp's like, oh, do 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 do, like just like not had no <laughs> idea what's going. <laughs> Listen, that that is some bad karma. I'm really wondering if all the rum is gone, and that's probably the. <laughs> Probably the problem. I got a new bottle in the car. Where did all the rum go? Oh, that is, that's where it is. I'm, I'm a retard. <laughs> but yeah, like women are, listen, um, like Johnny Depp's attorney is destroying her family, going to crush this dude's soul, run him through the ringer for celebrity dick that she will probably have for maybe two years tops. And then... Uh, and he's going to have to blue pill it up for... Yeah. In order to even get that going on, because he's, he's what? He's pushing 60. I think he is 60 this year. No, no. Yeah, 59, 60. Yeah, because yeah, I think he was 50 when he did Lone Ranger, and that was like 2012. Wow, I didn't know he was that old. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, he's been making movies since, I mean, his first one was A Nightmare on Elm Street. That was 1984. Wow. So... <laughs> mm-hmm. I would have been a year old. <laughs> Does he get eaten by the waterbed? I can't remember. Yes. Yeah, that's well, not the water bed. The water bed was uh, part four, but you know, he gets pulled into the bed, and then the geyser of blood comes out. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people didn't sleep on their beds after watching that one. Yeah, but the thing is, all right, you got men who cheat, and let's face it, most guys just don't have a stable of women lying around that they are hanging out that they can call at any time to bang. But it's just a small percentage of guys at the top can do that. But women. <laughs> yeah all they gotta say is yes like that got, lady right there on the screen they gotta right? roll a dicks a cock on speed dial that lady right there in the spandex <laughs> yep she could walk into any church get out behind the microphone wall service is going on and go uh i need to get some penis in the parking lot <laughs> uh any 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 penis will do any cock will do cock a doodle do and in some of those instances, not only will you get parishioners to just, you know, walk out of the confessional and go right to the parking lot and start cranking it in their pants, you know, through their pocket, they're going to get the priest. That's right. <laughs> I was just going to say that. And the altar boys. <laughs> they want to get in some of that action, I guess. What's that? Yeah, that's my rosary. What? Or you might call it by its other name, beads. Yeah. These are for me. <laughs> Listen. Don't mind the smell. All they got to do is be willing and say yes. And, and literally, they can install the revolving door and the front door and back door for all of the cock that's going to come through there. That's exactly what's going to happen. Yep. It's insane. Now, the thing the thing with women is this. I've seen some of the studies where women nowadays cheat more than men. Yeah, let me take a look at that. And women are a lot better at hiding it and their friends will cover for them so if you have a woman and she wants to go out on girls nights out it's over all right i'm just telling you right now she's getting a quarter throat yogurt delivered 
in the back seat <laughs> of a, whatever car she's in. Yep, there it is. Facts and stats show that women cheat more than men. There you go. And what really cracks me up, and we, we've discussed this before, and uh, I'm sure Sandman already knows this as well. What makes it different, the biggest double standard that we see, is that when a man cheats, he's a pig. He's not worthy of you. He Crucify him in court. I have to post it. Lamb based him all over social media. When a woman cheats, well, the man must not have been providing something that she desperately needed in the relationship. So, it's so his he fault. deserved whatever he got. It's his fault. Exactly. The, the first time I saw, like, the extent of this cheating, you, know, you have to you have to date a uh, girl who's got roommates, and then you can see this oh. firsthand. So, uh, yeah. so a gr- ex girlfriend of mine, you know, she moved in with a roommate. You know, one night, roommate brings over said boy. She bangs said boy. Said boy leaves, and then twenty minutes later, another said boy shows up. And then <laughs> did she even have time to wash out the crevasse? I no, don't probably know. not. I don't know. You know, it's but wow. it, and then and then 20, 30 minutes later, oh. the first said boy started knocking on the door. Oh. So, <laughs> so you know, it like it's a hop, so, it's a hot swap Eskimo brother. Are they thing. like tag teaming each other out like the so, WWE? So my, so my, my ex, she goes, she runs up the stairs and basically tells <laughs> tells the guy the this number two who was number one initially. She's gone. She went out to the the variety store, grocery store nearby. She's oh, yeah, gone. Totally. Right? She went to pick up more condoms. Uh-huh. Yeah, obviously. yeah. Oh, so, she makes you wear then, them. Too bad. But but that was that was the first case. The second case was those same two women moved in in another house with two other women. So now there's four women in the house, right? And one of the women who's not living in that house, um, one of the women in the house steals her boyfriend, and she gets so pissed off that she comes, she goes into the house and she gets spray paint and spray paints her entire wardrobe full of clothing, just like shh, spray paints everything, all seems, her cashmere sweaters, and seems her, legit, like all her fancy <laughs> shoes and all this stuff, right? Well, color coordination is a thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what happened? Yeah, and, and so what happened was, the girl that cheated, uh, she was kept in the circle of friends, but the girl who went nuts because she was being cheated on. She was thrown out of the circle of friends. Wow. So that's when I learned Whoa. not only did they not have any, um, you know, like no loyalty. loyalty, but they also they, the, the, the woman like it's, it's like a game. Wow. Right. So like if, if she steals your man, you better accept it. Sorry, loser. You know, you're the loser. You got to You know, you got to be a, a, a nice loser or whatever. I thought they used to be called home wreckers. Now. Yeah. Now they're the winners. Yeah. Wow. If you can steal nuts. the man and get away with it from the other women, <laughs> see, it's not so much that you know we see them, you know, like cheating on us, but what you got to look at it from the female perspective, how they treat cheaters. Their culture is accepting of cheaters. Oh yeah, they. That's why it. they do it. it uh, they encourage. I, I saw it. a a tweet uh, back and forth the other day. Uh, this woman says, hey, you know, like, oh, life is short, honey. Cheat on him. And then the guy it responds to the Ooh. to the tweet saying, "So it's okay if the man cheats?" Question mark. She the same woman who responds, "No." There you go. D- Can uh, she be any more bunch? concise? Yeah, a little bit. Wow. Yeah, it, it was all caps rage. No. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I've been cheated on quite a few times, probably four or five times in my life. And I'm, I'm sure we've all been there. And, <laughs> And I, you know, the, I got two dear John letters out of the deal. That was fucking rough. But that that's just the nature of the beast. And uh, I'm here to educate the young men out there that this is the reality on the ground. Yep. And if you think you're special and the rules of the universe don't apply, you're gonna find out in short order. No, you're not. And yes, they do. Whether you like it or not. And you can say, she's different. She oh, loves she me. Different. All you want. Uh, so uh, in the chat tonight, what, what I'm, I'm sure everybody here would be interested in is, what are some of the excuses that you have gotten from the people who have cheated on you? Because mm. I'm sure there's going to be some great stories in there. Oh my God. Even if the stories are super long, send them in. We can do a whole videos about them. We don't have to cover them tonight. Uh, I'm interested. Yeah, yeah, and most of the time it's uh, we grew apart, or I don't know. Yeah, and normally I'm like, so were you or were you not in your body when you slid that <laughs> penis down your throat? I'm just wondering. 
<laughs> or there's, in my case, there was the evolution of distancing herself from responsibility, which mm. began with, I'm sorry, you're so right, I have no excuse, and eventually worked its way up to, well, you must have been cheating, and therefore I'm completely justified in any and everything that I had to do, up to and including spreading vicious rumors about you to the tellers at the bank. So what you explain there... I wish I was making that up. ...is how she gaslighted herself. Yep. That's how good they are at gaslighting. They can actually do it to themselves and believe it. Well, they create the echo tunnel on their way to the echo chamber. They line it with people who are only partially removed from the situation. They tell these people all sorts of horrible, vile things about the person they're betraying. Mm -hmm. So it justifies their decision to move on to bigger and better penis. I I think the worst one I've ever seen uh, was in... I think 90, 98, hmm. I was dating this one girl, and uh, she had a married friend who quite literally would go to the bar and every single time would fuck a rando. Oh. She, and, you know, her friend, the, the friend I was dating was like, yeah, she had like five abortions. Ah. I'm like, this is insane. And you're still friends with her? I'm like, <laughs> okay, really. we're good. Naturally. I'm out. That was it. (laughs) Speaking of abortions, so apparently, um, I just read an article a couple days ago where they're they're now blaming men because women are getting abortions. Of course. Well, they blame us for everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, You remember there was that tweet storm, and now this person apparently has a website and has written a book called Ejaculate Responsibly. That's uh, what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, yeah, I, I said, well, what is this? We, I mean, she basically just took her tweet storm and turned it into a book, but we debunked every single point she made, what was it, two, three years ago. Yeah, we, we ripped we that apart. Fucking well, so that book has been her. out for a while then. Yeah, so I'm going to have to re-release that video just because this woman is now gaining all sorts of new notoriety, even oh, though yeah, she's yeah. a complete retard. And she's a Mormon with six children of her own. Well, yeah, <laughs> she wants to legislate proper ejac like ejaculation yeah, like, yeah. it's like what what does that mean like you've illegally you know come so we're gonna throw you in jail okay, like then we it, need to legislate taking your pill properly we need to legislate going in and getting your depo provera shot every three months or an don't I- you know that I- men are the only ones that are responsible or an of iud course. yeah have an iud installed at like 14 yep uh, look it's just gonna lead to more guys going their own way birth rates continuing to collapse that's it mm-hmm. yep which is really what it's all about. Depopulation, the elites want more for themselves and their offspring and less for us. And when you can convince the greater portion of the population to be useful idiots that aren't worth procreating with in the first place, hey, look at that. You're halfway to your goal. Yep. Listen, it's going to be uh, a shit show when it, the whole system inverts. Yep. Meaning there's a huge amount of people at the top and very small amount of people at the bottom. Yeah, well, the, it's going to fall over. It's going to fall apart. The people at the top are idiots. What's well, because be- they they for some reason they seem to have forgotten that they need a strong, numerous, productive class to maintain their lifestyle. And if they keep pushing the same bullshit they're pushing, sooner or later, that's not going to exist anymore. They're going to get the Marie Antoinette. And just like the other people on the left, who, you know, that they've you know, trained and conditioned and brainwashed into being their useful idiots, they'll eventually turn on each other. Yep. And that's no, where... The useful, the useful people are just going to say, screw it, we're going to go do... We're going to play another game. This game is rigged, and they're going to go to another country, they're going to emigrate they from are. the West, and that's yep. it. Well, I mean, we have all kinds of guys leaving the country yeah. to... Oh, yeah. Go after the uh, the women. There's and, expats all over the world, man. and like the the, I'm telling you right now, the women in the West are like, oh, they're just they're just grooming, they're abusing those women, they're taking advantage of them. Yeah. What? But what? when an older woman gets with a younger man here totally in the country, fine. it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Dare here's you. another thing women don't seem to understand about what they're doing is they're going to get old. The wall gets them all. Yep. And there are all kinds of women now turning 40 who fucking regret their shit out of selling their box for nothing. What is the stats now? By 2030, 40% of women? Over half. Over half of women turning 40 will be single and childless. I mean, what do you think is going to happen when you turn the VJJ into a free sample platter at BJ's? Well, you're giving out too many BJ's, and obviously you're not taking too many deliveries to the warehouse. I'm just telling you, like, and, and, and <laughs> the statistics 
for a woman north of 40 to get married are atrocious. They're probably yeah. better than for men. Men is like 90% of men over 40 that are unmarried will never get married. Well, they're well, probably choosing not to. A lot of them choose not to. Exactly. Yeah, which I don't, I, listen, I talk to lots of guys who are like in their late 30s and are, are thinking about getting married. I'm like, you're 38. Just fucking, no, don't do it. It's, it's I, 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 I thought you were going to say, just, yeah, do it. Like, yeah! <laughs> no, no, no. L now listen. She young and tight? Yeah, just use a fake name. If <laughs> you want to try to get married and go for the happy ever after and have yep. the, the two kids, the half a dog, quarter of a cat, three fish, whatever it is, fine. But if it blows up in your face, only do it one fucking time, one and done. Damn right. All right, because the seventies are gone. A lot of these ladies got married at eighteen, nineteen, got divorced at twenty four, got remarried at twenty six, twenty seven, and then uh, you know drove on. Like they literally, they came up with the starter husband thing. <laughs> yeah, he'll make a great first. But now husband. women are getting married later, divorcing later. Literally, they're getting divorced while they're hitting the wall. Yep, and then where you get this rash of women, where all the good men go, they don't want your worn out, beat up, hosed out, crevasse, <laughs> snot pocket. <laughs> Sorry, I got no sympathy for you. I really don't. No, no, none. Why would you? I got a dictionary. You can look between shit and syphilis and get it yourself. Well, I mean, think about it. If women control the dating market from fifteen to thirty-five, and they're bitching about what dating is like. You know, talk to the manager. That's right. <laughs> Carrying it up. Well, all right. Let's get on to this. <laughs> we can go on for hours talking about this. this is well, insane. that's why we invite Sandman on is because you don't really need a subject when you got Sandman on. You can just shoot well, the shit. Hey, 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 look here, Sandman. I watch your videos from the very beginning, and uh, you are such a high-level thinker when you talk about your uh, your subjects. It's, it's amazing. Thanks. It's hardly yeah, any I swearing. I can't even I can't get behind the camera without saying the F word at least a bazillion times. No, I hadn't noticed. <laughs> I just can't turn the grunt off. I just can't do it. But then you I watch Sam. I just try videos. to figure out their angle. And their angle is always, yeah. you know, comes back down to themselves and yep. focusing on, you know, what's best for number one? Me. And that's it, right? Yeah, and, method, then, method and then dicks. you know, you figure out you figure out, okay, what's the optimal position for them to be in in this specific situation and then work your way back and then you know exactly what they're up to and then you see it every time and then it just fucking drives you crazy see i'm swearing i'm just getting angry at this no it's fine you, go ahead i guess we're here all the time <laughs> Fuck yeah, you, you, you see it you see it so much you just you, you're like it, it's 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 I, i'm tired of it i'm getting really really ex anxiety and tired of it right like yeah. It, and it's it's like you can tell the people behind YouTube are you know are censoring me. They're either women or simps because they're doing the exact same things, right? Because yeah. if they censor your comments, your comments don't show up, then that means that the algorithm is going to say less comments. So that means it's not going to promote your video higher. Yep. So it's like and we're, you can't alter the algorithm, but if we you know we do every single video, we block every single comment, and they didn't do it just like out of the blue. They did it slowly, like once in a while, a video would get like. Like, come on! Are, you know this is so obvious. It's so yeah. obvious, and you, and you see it, and you're just like, you know, can I complain to the manager? No, get out of here! It's like, <laughs> it's not, it's like, like the manager is the person blocking you, and they just won't tell yep. you, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, and every time you, you know, actually get through to somebody at YouTube, it's kind of like when the DOJ investigates itself. Well, after an <laughs> internal investigation, we've decided we didn't do anything wrong. And you know what? I remember talking to Sandman in like 2014, 15 and bitching about YouTube and like we need to find alternatives. And, and Sandman was like, good luck. They're the only show in town. Not anymore. Nope. Strictly because they want to do their algorithm. They want to censor. People are fucking leaving. And now they literally have legitimate competition. Rumble. Yeah, we do. Well, have you seen what they're doing to Rumble stock in the last week or two? They've been like knocking that thing down heavily, right? So, you know, all of the tech oligarchs have tons of money. So now they're using the money to short Rumble to make sure that the platform doesn't get the funding it needs to survive. Not surprised. Yeah, but the thing with shorting, if you fuck that up, 
Your liability is <laughs> unlimited. Yeah. All Wall Street bets shows up and takes your life, right? Yeah. When I was an investment banker, I never ever screwed with the shorting stuff. I just, it just, no good. There's no upside to it. Oh, well, there's no down. Da- there's no. Uh, there's a limited. Uh, what is it? There is an unlimited downside, right? Well, zero. It ends at zero. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, t- t- not if you. Uh, what do you call it? Not if you're on margin, right? Well, margin gets crazy, so I, I never fuck with that either. I mean, uh, I got burned on the margin accounts a couple times way back <laughs> in the day, and I just don't play with that stuff. Well, speaking of investments, I mean, well, Bitcoin's back up over 20K now, and Ooh. we're in the middle of crypto winter. Bitcoin is exactly where it's supposed to be. You know, I was, I was, you know, everyone was saying 150, 200,000 last run, and then I was thinking, okay, if it, if it did what it was if it did the correction that it did in previous runs and it was up around 150, then it should get down to about 40. This time we got up to 70 and we're down to 20. So that's about right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, you know, we're just going to bounce around here for the next year, year and a half. And then we begin the next run and everyone will have forgotten the lessons from the previous run. Well, what I do when I want to do the, uh, the trading is I bounce trade, which I just look for the floor and then I just check the price it gets to where the the bounces happen. I look at the at the volume and who's buying or who's selling. And if the demand is high, I buy it. It'll bounce up, and then I sell it at yes, five six swing percent. trade. Yeah, there you go. and I then if it's it too high, oh, time to sell it. Buy it. Yeah, you could do yeah. that for a while, but then sometimes it it drops below that point, and then you're like, oh, look at that. It's it's at a deal. Like I'm going to buy it at the bounce, and then it just keeps going. And yeah, you're like, oh, that's why you stop loss it. Yep. Yeah. What ten percent, five percent. I you know when I used to do bounce trading it was between three and seven percent. So, I mean, okay, it's, it's a little bit le- a little bit less than five to ten. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. All right, let's uh, pull up the article. Are you ready for yeah, this? Let's do this. All We've right. Been- so, what I find fascinating is, I mean, you can look up. There's hundreds of articles like this. But what's most interesting to me is what the simp's say. And what women say when they get down to specifics. Because when women tell you about what they consider cheating, they will, every once in a while, usually every second or third chick will tell you what they think isn't quite cheating. Oh. And of course, we know in that situation, these women are telling on themselves. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, Lachlan Brown, which I, I can't remember what episode it was, but we did a response to some of this guy's other literature. So I know he is a simp, soy boy, cuck mangina mm. through and through. So he's obviously consulted with a lot of women for this list. It's the eight main types of cheating. <laughs> Number one, emotional affair. And that's actually, this is the more common one right here. Yes. Because you ever hear like, well, he's my work husband. That's yeah. an emotional affair. Yep. And you should really be worried about that. Yeah. Yeah, because sooner or later, somebody's going to be Xeroxing their ass on the copy machine, and there might be some balls scraping along the bottom of that copy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Things happen. and uh, no, I, I think I was in one of those, so I yeah. <laughs> well, my thing is this. Uh, emotional affairs are very common. Men do that less, though, than women. Women are all about the emotional affair, and they don't think, they don't think anything's wrong with it. Yeah, until well, it's it happens like friend's own attention at work. Come on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you're going to find most of these things. You know, it, it really it's only cheating when men do it. That's the bottom line. Pretty much from most of these things. Yeah. I, I'll go with that. Yeah. So you know, you're not doing anything physical. You know, just sending. Me- so how do you figure what constitutes emotional cheating? It's hard to define. Late night texting, constant messaging on social media. It can be tough to figure out what is an innocent friendship, is what an, and what is actually cheating. All right. When a woman does it, it's an innocent friendship. When Mm -hmm. a man does it, it's going to be considered cheating. Well, typically, if you are having communications with an individual of the same sex or the different sex, and you're talking about very sensitive shit, like asking, you know, for advice about other men or, you know, something like that, it's emotional cheating. Yeah. You know, it happens all the time. And, um, I've been present at a couple of uh, vicious arguments uh, in regards to wives doing that to their husbands. Yeah. Especially in the Army. I, I literally, I've had, 
I remember this one E5 literally comes into my office, takes the phone off of the receiver in my office, doesn't ask me, picks it up. He's like, hey, Sergeant Pop, you need to hear this. It went on for like 15 minutes about how his wife is like, you know, going out to dinner and lunch with their boss and talking to these other two guys. And and literally, she was telling these strange men who she works with personal details about her husband. Oh, that women just do that. It's <laughs> so fucked up. I I, I just, oh, my God, we need to come up with a new word for that. Uh, women share everything. Oh my God. And listen, um, I'm a firm believer in the loyalty test. And I've done this many times. You have a loyalty test. All right. The loyalty, loyalty test is this. I tell them something. Like, hey, don't tell anyone. This is fucking very important. It would be bad. Oh. Blah, blah, blah. And then I find out one of her friends knows it. Yep. Done. I literally draw a red line through their name in my mind. They're ghosted and gone. I, you don't need that in your life, because that's the person that'll tell you where all the bo- will tell on you where all the bodies are buried. Yeah, or all the other crazy shit you've ever done in your life. You, you, if you don't think that that woman won't turn around and use all of that negative information as ammo against you in a divorce court, oh, you got another thing. Coming. You're out of your goddamn <laughs> out of your mind. Wow, you have any loyalty tests, Sandman? Have you ever? Did anything um, similar? I, I think I think the only loyalty tests I had to deal with was with, with my dad. He basically told me something. He's like in confidence. He says, "Don't tell your mother." I told my mother, and then it came back to him, and then she freaked out. Right. So I oh. learned that at the age of ten or twelve, don't tell women things because, or don't tell <laughs> women things that other men tell you, especially if they can cause no, problems. No, because uh, literally they because. It's not even it's not even worth listening to the drama, right? But women love the drama, so you, you're taking away their drama by not g- giving them any information. That's the addiction. That's what you yeah, do. yeah. When you tell a woman a secret, you're not telling her anything in confidence. You're giving her gossip. Just, just like well, con- look, anything you tell her money. will be told to every other woman she knows, exactly. a, including the women she hates. And then yeah. they will know everything about you. you know, I get. I got a guy a couple weeks ago. He sends me this message, and he's Ooh. like. Oh, I, I I was with this great woman. I could tell her things. She she didn't tell her friends that I was blah blah blah. And I'm like, no, she told her friends that. She just told her friends not to tell you that she <laughs> like just the the naivete out there is just unbelievable. Wow. And th- this is why women get away with the stuff they get away with because yeah. guys are naive, right? Well, yeah, yeah, and that's what I, I, that's what you and I are trying to do is break that cycle of naivete. It, yeah. It, it, well, look, there's there's two ways to get the outcome we want, right? The outcome we want is to for women to have accountability, for men to be able to succeed, and there's all, there's two ways to get there. One is through philosophy, and the other one is through technology. We have to free men from you know, mediocre muff. That's the way we got to go. Mediocre so, muff. <laughs> I like it. I got to write that down. Better write that one down. <laughs> here's, an, here's another joke I came up with. Hammer hand in the chat. Two things women can never keep their mouth shut about, cock and gossip. Yep. And especially when they go hand, you mean around, around hand other women, in hand. Not around men. <laughs> listen, I'm just telling you right now. Uh, <sighs> the, uh, listen. I should probably do a video on loyalty tests yeah, so men know one. exactly what type of tests they should do. Wow. Because it, I'm going to be honest. If you have a woman that can't keep her mouth shut and keeps blabbing your business, you don't need that in your life. No. I'm serious. The, the thing is that they are, they are just, just they're addicted to that drama. That's a, why do you think soap operas have yeah, existed exactly. since they fucking invented the radio? You tell them anything. Soap operas are porn for women. Come yeah, on. exactly. Yeah, it, it's just it's fodder for the gossip table. I mean, it's to the point where, and my my wife told me this story. She was working at a doctor's office over in Southfield. They completely ostracized her from the group. Why? Because she wouldn't just complain and tell them everything about me. That's it. They, they wanted to be able to bitch about their boyfriends, their husbands, what have you, talk about how terrible they were, share stories about girth and length and whatever the fuck oh else God. they talk about or whoever they're dicking around on them with behind their back. Ugh. But And if you actually, there's a, a woman there who won't get involved in that, out. Yep. You just, you're thrown out in the breeze. That's absolutely correct. And I've, I've actually heard that before, too. 
Well, why do you think it's girls' night out and not everyone's night out, right? Like, they don't want exactly. one guy there just in case he's going to blab to all the other guys. No, when I was at the 4th, 3rd Civil Affairs, we had a lesbian chick who literally was like a dude. Yeah. And then we had a bunch of other female soldiers. They hated her because she wouldn't participate in the bullshit. Yeah. And I think part of our naivete is that, you know, we've been told by women, uh, we're, we're equal. You know, we can do everything that you can do, whatever. We're just yeah. one of the guys, right? Yeah, yeah. So we talk to you like one of the guys, but you blab like one of the girls. Look, nope. if you, if you want to know her level of loyalty, look at the bullshit that her friends pull, right? And, and you know, she's going to – she's basically doing the same thing that they're doing mm-hmm. behind your back. So if you see her friends being complete a-holes, then you know that yeah. she's like that too. Well, you and I both know that every person out there is basically the sum of the six closest people they have in their lives. So yeah, if- what, is, what does that tell you about all the, yeah. you know, the friendless incels out there? They're nothing, right? Well, like, for instance, l- l- let me have an example here. Um I'm sorry, nothing's coming to mind. Well, I mean, just you can judge a person by the company they keep. Well, here's that's, here's that's the interesting thing. Like, goes. so we're in this age now where you don't necessarily keep real company; you keep virtual company, in the right? Worst, so, yeah, it's, it's so th- maybe maybe you know maybe we should update that to like you are the sum of the you know, five or six people that you follow the closest on your social media. Yep, because yeah. that's going to influence you. So. If that influences you more than you know people in real life, then the pe- then that can exponentially influence you more than you know contacting people in real life. See, so I'm that's gonna... why there's a lockdown on you know people like us online because they don't want to you know we don't they don't want us being the most influential five or six people yeah. one of the five or six people to like millions of guys. Yeah, they want the Kardashians to have influence. Yeah, I myself, <laughs> I'm an analog dude. All right, yep. I. I Literally, I'm a face-to-face guy. Look you in the eye, shake your hand. My word is my bond kind of person. And uh, I realized while I was going through my divorce, I couldn't trust anyone. I had maybe five or six people who had my back. Everyone else was like, I don't want to be involved, blah, blah, blah. Gone. All of them. Mm -hmm. Done. Boom. The gates came down. Fuck off. No more. I'm out. And then, you know, I it, that really opened up my eyes. So every time I have somebody in my, you know, ar- orbiting around me, and if they're like flaky or there's something I don't like, they're gone. I don't, I don't have time for that. I am trying to get. I listen. I got to be on my grind. I want perfection for myself. Yep. And if I, you know, because a lot of people once they see you succeeding, they want to hold you back because misery loves company. Yeah. You don't need those people. Nope. Loyal Go people on. will have loyal friends. So well, you would think. You would. You would hope. Yeah. Uh, but that actually that leads right into this one here. Cyber affair. I, I'm not sure exactly how this is any different from emotional affair, since that's how most people communicate now. But yeah, an emotional connection developed online. Yeah, like OnlyFans. But apparently uh-huh. that doesn't count, right? <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> Because if you post nudes on Reddit or OnlyFans for validation and your boyfriend doesn't know, that's not cheating. No, it's not cheating. According to this chick here. That is absolutely goddamn insane. I mean, she lies, of course. My boyfriend hasn't initiated sex in over two years. One, two, three. Bullshit! How old is she? 24. 24. So if he's like, you know, what is he, 54? (laughs) <laughs> Unless she's dating somebody that can't get it on without a blue pill, I'm uh, pretty sure this is weapons-grade nonsense. Because there's always got to be an excuse why you're straying outside your relationship for the validation mm-hmm. that you should be getting within it. Listen, when I was a free-range fornicator, I would not... I mean, I was always looking for the poon, and it, it was. there's no way I could do two years when I was younger without actually getting any poon. Or yeah. trying to get poon. Yeah. Uh, you still there, Sandman? Yeah, I'm still here. Cool, cool. He's still here, man. <laughs> it just well, she says that it's because he's got some sort of pain, pain during his uh, during his uh, condition. Like, okay, so but but you're gonna stick around and make him pay the bills, mm-hmm. and then post. Look, well, whatever. I, I just think I just think we need to look at it this way. Like, you got you know the the whole work emotional affair at work thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just that's just a friend-zoned guy at work that she may or may not end up settling with. 
at some point yeah. he might actually be an option, a good option for her to dump her boyfriend and go with that guy or dump her husband and go with that guy. So, you know, like I, I when I was in that situation, the woman I was having the emotional affair with at work, she was constantly bad mouthing my partner because sure. she wa basically wanted me to get rid of the partner. And then she probably going to monkey branch over to me. Mm -hmm. Right. So that was that was the plan. That was the plan that I could see all. So, you know, my my girlfriend saw that I didn't see that at the time, but my girlfriend saw it. So she was a very kind of worried about her, but she didn't want to tell me about her plan because then that would that would give away the game. Yeah. Right. So they can't they can't give away the game because then they might try the game, you know, but luckily my the girlfriend at the time, she worked with a whole bunch of gay dudes. So I was perfectly OK. Well, it's 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 the makeup industry, right? So you got like, you know, like women and a few token gay males to do the makeup. Token and that's about it. Male, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are correct in that. Yeah. So, you know, the, from, from that perspective, you know, that was that. So whenever we would go out, she would always like be flirting on the the males with the darker complexion. Ah, so uh. so it, so like and right there in front of me, too. And I'm just like. Like, well, and I had again. I was completely clueless. I didn't know what was going on. Ooh. Yeah, mm. like I, I, you know, like it's it just is what it is. What are you going to do, right? And they're getting their oil checked with the black rod. Yeah, and then you yeah. call them out on it. It's like, oh, it's just harmless. Oh uh, yeah, sure. It's, it's no big sex. deal. It's so well, I, is that is that an emotional affair right there in front of you? I, I you know, is that flirting? I don't know what the hell that you would call that. Well, like, but if you did that with the woman. Horn. Like yeah. they would, they would, they, you know, like all of a sudden her and all her friends and the whole room of all the women would like, you know, rise in, in indignation from their cream chicken and look at you and see what, what's going on. Right? <laughs> cream chicken. <laughs> that sounds like an urban dictionary thing. That's terrible. <laughs> God. Please what? don't add that. You don't want to Google dictionary. that. What? Please. <laughs> no one in the audience add cream chicken to the urban dictionary. Maybe it's I do already not in want there. To know what it's, please don't. Just like your ex. It's already in there. Stop. What? Allegedly. Wait, what? Oh, get get me sued, man. Creamy chicken's an author on Urban Dictionary. Ah, so okay. I guess you uh, you got lucky. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> eh, another rooster in the hen house. So That's the cyber just... one, what's so the cyber one is what? Basically that they're talking to some guy online. Just talking online, yeah. So yeah, they're but... just having conversations. Okay. Like, yeah. What if they're sh sh what if she's sending pictures of her uh, high beams? Exactly, yeah. You know, or the beef and cheddar and the catcher's mitt that's been beat up three ways to Sunday. I, oh, you know, I don't know. Uh, look, look, like she, you're gonna, like, I'm sure it's happening to most guys. They're just not aware of it, right? Probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, like, unless she, unless she, if she password protects your her phone, yeah, it's happening. But if she doesn't password protect your phone, and she, if you, if you get her phone uh, password, well, again, that could also be reverse psychology, right? Like if she gives you the password. That she knows that you, that's a way of, she knows that you're going to trust her enough She to think that you can get access to anything on her phone. So you're not going to look because there's nothing to look, see because, you know, totally why would she give you the either. password if there was something bad to see? Right. So they, they, you know, they think of all these games, right? So you don't know what they're doing. Like it's just. People call just, that bluff all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like you could look at my phone right now. Oh, okay. Well, then she only must now, be fine. Right? Well, listen, if, if I am in the mindset where I need to look at your phone, I'm leaving. I'm already done. Wasn't there a strong, successful male story like that? Chick was like, well, her friend was trying to convince her that all guys are unfaithful. You should look at his phone right now. He unlocked it and gave it to her. Mm -hmm. Went through it. There's nothing on there. And her friend's like, fine. He's like, okay, now your phone. <gasps> oh my God. There we go. <laughs> well, no, I didn't have to get it. <laughs> Yeah, and then her friends like, "How dare you ask to see her phone? She's been nothing but good to you." <laughs> it's like, okay, and then he broke up with her right there in front of her friend. We're done. Bye bye. Obviously, you're hiding something from me. Mm -hmm. Like 24 hours later, you can look at my phone now. I swear, you can unlock it for it. You can look at everything. Well, now everything's gone. Yeah. Well, he runs the software on it. He's all the deleted stuff, and he like just finds it all. Right? She went full Hillary on the phone. She bleach pitted it. She bleach pitted her phone. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a conspiracy theory. Not a lot of talk. Yeah, about now, that. gentlemen, if you have a girlfriend or a wife, and she's sending nude pictures to some dude that she probably will never meet, you probably need to get rid of her. Yeah, because uh, it's just a matter of time before she gets tired of that. He just starts looking for something closer to home. Yeah. And the whole, well, it was, they were just a stranger. It means nothing. Oh, my. Well, that's actually, I'm going to be honest, that's worse. 
Yeah. When you say it didn't mean anything, okay, so now if that means nothing, I, the one who pays the bills, am worth less than nothing yep. to you. And this and that leave. That is Look, a hard pill to swallow because my ex wife uh, did similar shit. And let me tell you, uh, that is a huge blow to your ego. Uh, a lot of men never bounce back from that. And I'm going to be honest, I don't think I ever will. I mm-hmm. will always be fucked up over that for the rest of my days because the bitch killed my dog. That'll keep you on guard, though. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. And you will save your kindness for people who earn it. And correct. That's exactly and, how it should be. And I, I used, like, literally walking down that driveway for the last time, right behind the U-Haul truck with all my shit in it. I'm like, never again. Yeah. Never again. What were you going to say, Sandman, before? I didn't, didn't mean to cut you out. Oh, I can't. Now I'm now I'm drawing a blank. Right? Yeah, hey, uh, Pop all depressed you with his story. Yeah. Are you drinking? Dog. <laughs> oh man, poor dog. <laughs> yeah, man, that that dog didn't deserve that shit. Now this next one here, I don't fucking understand it. What would a relationship coach say? Isn't this part of the thing where they always have like the paid uh, or the? Yeah, well, relationship hero is a site where a highly trained relationship mm-hmm. coach just fuck you. But I thought there were different types hero. of cheating. How come we're now into like? Point number three, and it's completely it sounds completely. Well, yeah, different. it has nothing they're, to do with. They're it. selling uh, services. Yeah, they're selling bullshit. And it, that that's object Blake, affair. What the hell is yeah, that? Yeah, Blake and I actually discovered that a while ago. Oh, here's Remember, a good one. I did the video about the guy who whose wife destroyed his car. Yes, they think your hobbies are yeah. cheating. Yeah. This is women, and in this case, a simp mangina speaking on behalf of his female overlords or whatever publication he happens to be writing for, telling you that your hobbies, like if you rebuild cars or if you watch the Orn pay a little too much for somebody's liking, a fair. You're cheating, therefore, look, women's a look, lot of like I, I, I was basically sent to sex therapy because apparently I had a problem watching what? stuff, you know, two, three times a week. Wow. Two, three times a week. Yeah, some people like, and apparently you know, I was told you, you have an addiction problem by the <laughs> really? doctor, and I was like, you know, I had to go for cognitive behavioral therapy for for to, to correct my you know issues that I had. Wow, wow. Listen, uh, like as I've gotten older, the whole porn thing is less and less important in my life. Oh well, yeah, and, and in some cases, like it says here, in some cases, a porn addiction can lead to the partner long, no longer being aroused by normal sex. This is absolutely true. Oh yeah, that yeah. does happen. You, you can desensitize the hell out of yourself by watching way too much porn pay. So you that's can, why I well, say don't do it. it <laughs> the reason they become so desensitized is mainly because they pull the skin off their pud. Well, that and they're constantly bombarding themselves with things that will, you know, you can, whatever the kink is, it's, you know, rule 34. If you can Dopamine. think of it, there's porn of it. So you can constantly keep ratcheting yep. up that kink scale online, but you can't do that with a person. Well, not without, you know, possibly accruing a lot of paperwork. Yes, the, the bad paperwork. <laughs> you don't want that. You know, the coitus consent form at redonculus.com, ball of worms, gang bang rider, it's all there. It's all there. We need to do it. <laughs> no, account. look, look, I, you can get... <laughs> Two completely different highs from sex and porn. Like it, it like I, I find the two complement each other and they work really well. Now, for five years, from like twenty to twenty five, I was in a long term relationship. I did it every day. So the odds of her cheating at that point, like probably zero, right? Mm-hmm. We worked together, lived together, like every day. So and then the relationship after that, two to three years or two to three times a week for ten years. Mm-hmm. It never really changed. So I don't know after that, but if if um, I was in a long term relationship and I started to see that it was kind of waning, at, up to the age of thirty five, I'd be thinking, well, I think she's probably getting it someplace else because she's not getting it from me. I'm not getting, you know, like, yep. and then she'll probably say things like, well, you know, my sex drive is just lower than usual. It's like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> and you pull out the smoke grenade. Yeah. They I'm will out. once they have they've secured a new penis. The, the, the excuses will flow like rain. Oh yeah, the, yeah. They will find reasons not to kiss you. They they've shuffled you to the back burner. They don't do anything for you anymore. We did a whole video called Backburner Blues. There you go. We cover all of these all of this phenomena. Yeah. Now this next one explains itself. Physical affair. Yeah. Well, <laughs> You know, you're, you're getting the throat yogurt. You're taking deliveries to the warehouse, mm-hmm. and then you're trying to get somebody else to clean it out. It's disgusting. God damn, that's just terrible. And here we go. Just like with the wheel of power and control, financial infidelity. 
Okay. So if you buy somebody a birthday present at work, okay. I'm going to tell you this right now. Women do this all the time. Hiding your spending habits from your other half can be considered a form of infidelity. Hmm. I wonder which gender, because there's does only that two, more. Yeah. does that more. Like, who has the most debt? Yep. That will that really answers the question right there. You know, you know what about what about women when they they hide their health issues? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or or celebrate them, Lizzo. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Let's celebrate our health issues. Now, here we go. We Let's celebrate mic- mental illness. We got micro cheating. Micro cheating. Oh like god. Micro, what's that? What is that micro uh, uh, offense or micro aggression? Micro aggression. Look at the fuck out of here. A slick way that people who are not ready to commit to a relationship stay in the game without compromising their existing partner or status. It's something many people do without realizing it. Oh, it's so it's like white privilege. Well, <laughs> women do this all the time when they have the, the backup guy. Oh, there's, have you heard of the micro-divorce before? No. No. That? Paul Proteus, uh, rest in peace, mentioned this a long time ago. It's actually pretty brilliant. So instead of marrying a guy and then taking half his shit, what they'll do is they'll move in with a guy and then they'll, he'll buy, they'll get all the new furniture, TV, oh. appliances, everything, and then she'll kick his ass out and then she'll have like a whole new apartment. Yep. Right? So, wow. so like, you know, one girl I was dating, I was like, oh, you have an Xbox. I'm like, she never plays the Xbox. That was the previous guy's Xbox, right? Uh, <laughs> wow. Right. Wow. So that's what they do. They just get the guy to buy all new shit. And then, you know, like I, I, I basically, when I broke up that five-year relationship, she basically told me, hey, I'm moving in with my sister and, you know, outside of town, you can either come move, live with me or you can, like, you know, stay here. It's your choice. And I was like, I'll move. And then I was really like, no, I'm not moving. But <laughs> I, let, I let her move. I, I helped her move everything over. And then I just never really, I visited a few times and that was pretty much it. Bubba. But the, the, the idea is basically that, um, you know, like she, she got all the TV, she got all the furniture, she got it. I just gave it away. I didn't give a fuck. I just wanted to get out of there. Right. I, so know, I, the same, that's a, I did the same thing. Yeah. <sighs> when I got so, divorced, I took one futon and a massage chair. That's it. Oh, that's the one that's upstairs. All right, got yeah. it. That's it. <laughs> I'm just still trying. I'm still laughing at micro cheating. I think I got micro head ones. You know, chick just thought she would tease me, you know, whip it out, lick the tip, put it back in. Like, what are you doing? It's micro gonna, head. Let's take a quick piss break. <laughs> I got to hit the pisser. Oh, it's a good to do a quick piss break. Sorry, huh? man. Couldn't even make it an hour. What? Mm, let's uh, see. It's one hour exactly. I don't think Sandman that prostate has seen. Pressure. I don't think Sandman has seen any of these deep fakes yet. So we'll go with. Uh, Whoa. Oh, don't uh, spill, bro. He spilled beer. Oh, he spilled the beer all over the brain. The brain. All right. Let's uh, let's go with Eastwood Pop. Go ahead, make my day.
actors' heads. And <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have no idea wh- why that is. It's insane. So is that your first Billy Von Baum deep fake experience there, Sam? Yes, it is. I, I remember promoting him when he first started off like a long time ago. He's the man. Yeah, he's uh, he's the man. He's in the chat, too. Billy, it's always a pleasure to see you. That dude's a genius. Genius. So after micro-cheating, what else we got here? Oh. Is flirting cheating. Yes. Look, okay, now, see, so this is where, like, when you can tell that the author has their head up their ass. Because you have an emotional affair. He talks about late-night texting and then goes to cyber affair, which also has to do with the exact same thing. Yep. And then you go to the financial infidelity, the, the micro cheating. It says one of the things is flirting with other people on social media or messaging apps. Going back to number two, mm-hmm. and one of them is flirting with the waitress or waiter at a cafe. And then it's is flirting cheating. You yeah. just said it was. Well, my thing, it, it's all right. These people are morons who write this stuff. Do Lachlan I think Brown can't flirting write for shit. is cheating? Yes and no. I think it's incredibly disrespectful if they do it in front of you. That I mean that that's a no uh but uh for the most part, you know, if I'm with a woman and she's flirting with all kinds of dudes, I know my fucking uh my time is limited and uh it's, she doesn't belong to me and it was just my turn. Time to move along. Yep. Boom. <sighs> It is what it is, I guess. <laughs> it's just uh, it's it's no it's just no wonder to me that we already had to tackle writing by this guy once before because he's still doing all the same shit. Yeah, we ripped him apart a couple of years ago, didn't we? They just pad out their stuff, and you know, then you have an excuse for an article that takes twenty minutes to read, when really you could solidify it into like two paragraphs, pretty much. Yeah, so. that's right. So, behaviors that many people consider cheating. Okay, this is a University of Michigan study, I guess. So, grabbing or touching inappropriate areas. I guess it depends on whether or not you're on the football team. Uh Going to an event, having dinner, or buying gifts for someone who is not your partner. That would be a problem. Unless it's girls' night out, then it's fine. Uh, If it's a business dinner, that's one thing. Yeah. Constant texting, especially explicit texts, or flirting with someone who's not your partner. Oh, fuck naturally. yeah. That's no no. That's Going no, on a date with someone who is not your partner. What the? A date? I mean, come on. Oh, my God. You just Be- took me back to the early 90s. <laughs> exactly. Uh, being in internet chat rooms or social media with the intention of flirting and or getting other people's numbers, well, that just takes care of like 90% of Western women right yeah, there. Right there, all. Meeting up with exes, that's, again, one of those things that's totally okay for a woman but never okay for Oh, you. yeah. There's none of that. If we're just friends. You're friends. Look, look, if, if you're, you're in one of these Duh. situations, you need to start looking at you know divorce attorneys. This is one video I'm working on for this guy. He's talking about um, how he he basically divorced his wife and took her house. Okay, so he figured out a way to kind of like screw her over. Okay. So anyway, I'm, j- I'm just saying in terms of like you know, if this infidelity is bugging you, it's gonna it's only gonna elevate over time, right? So yeah. you're gonna have to lo- start looking for the exits sooner than later. Sorry if I'm uh, no no you're you're absolutely blabbing correct. all over the place. No, you're not blabbing. It's absolutely correct. Yeah. Now, this is interesting here. What? How men and women differ on what they consider cheating. So, 72% of men believe that sexual affairs are worse than emotional affairs. Well, for women, one leads directly to the other. Yes, they are, they are linked. Two, 69% of women said emotional affairs were worse than sexual affairs. Hmm. Six, 76% of people would forgive their partner for a strictly sexual affair. Who are these people? Why does it say people? Yeah, I know. I, I want to know where that split I, I am not one of them. 80% of men say that they would forgive their partner for an emotional affair. Only 30% of women would forgive an emotional affair. Hmm. Look, look, I, I, don't, I don't think that's the case. I think women forgive way more than you think because they're afraid of ending up all alone. So imagine you're like a 60 or 70-year-old woman. Your, your husband is having an affair. You find out, like, are you going to leave him? Like, especially if everything else in the relationship, for the most part, is stable and good. You're not going to leave him, right? Like, 
It's like the fir- very first video I made was called, you know, about the Costa Concordia disaster, that cruise ship off the coast of Italy that, you know, hit some rocks and sank because the the captain had his um, is basically his uh, not prostitute, but his uh, like mistress on the boat with him. And he wanted to show off. So he came a little too close to the, to the shore. Oh, so but anyway, so in, during the, the divorce, <laughs> the, 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 during the, the law, um, the trial for his like, you know, the, both the wife and the mistress were defending him. So wow. you'd be surprised. Women, women will, de- that's what kind of tr- triggered me. I was like, wait a minute, why are both of these women defending this guy? Like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, and, that, and that's, that's why I started making content. I'm like, what, what, what is this? That is weird. It is very weird. It is, but it's I not as weird too. as you think, because I've actually seen that in it, it scenes, experiences of that or se- like, sessions of that in my personal life people around me mm-hmm. and i've seen women who knew their boyfriends or husbands were cheating on them and they 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 but and then you know what they did they didn't tell attack the guy they attacked the other woman yep right so that's the that's what you got to understand like or they they would just try to cut they would like tell that woman to like piss off because you know this is my man get out of here right if that even. Yep. Uh, th- there was an episode of Friends that had a really interesting twist. Joey finds out that his dad has been cheating on his mom for 10 years. Oh, I, saw that. I remember that one. And his mom has known the entire time. And when he tried to get his dad to come clean, she smacked him upside the head. She's like, things were fine. He was happy. He has a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> for the last 10 years, he's been so ashamed of himself. He's been a better husband. And I was I, like, I remember watching this when I'm younger. I'm like, what the Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> and, and then you actually see shit like this play out in the real yeah. world. You're yeah. like, okay, the, the writers of this show actually knew what was going on. They didn't pull this out of their ass. No, no. they didn't. No, no. And you know what? I don't know, man. Just <sighs> in today's people are day obsessed and age... with this friends thing. I, I went to the friends <laughs> experience and and filmed, did an interview there. Like people are just insane for this stuff. Like I don't know. Like they're paying like fifty dollars to go into like a mock fake friends set yeah. and like it's not even like authentic um you know props no. and stuff from the show it's just some like half-assed thing they put together if you if you watch the show and you saw the sets and then you saw the cheap sets that they they created and just put, you're like why are people paying 50 dollars for this they're, they're so this is the new thing people are they don't have experiences they don't travel to museums they don't go to national parks for the stuff that we used to go for you know to see a beautiful site or to like learn about history they go for the selfie, right? Yeah. So, oh, yeah, yeah. and they go to There's live vicariously. The, yeah. So, like, they, they, I, I, a few few months ago, I filmed the Barbie experience. So, literally, <laughs> they're they're all these women are dressing up as Barbie. Oh God! And they're going into like the Barbie experience, and some of them are like super hot, smoking blondes. And mm. then I'm going around, and I'm like, "Can I take your picture?" And I'm just going around, <laughs> like, taking all the blonde. So I've got this compilation. Maybe I should send you some of these blonde photos. Yeah, yeah. And- bring it on, man. I'm- <laughs> 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 Send them to my email. That's I'll bring crazy. them up. Crazy. That's crazy. But they're all they're all dressed in pink. They all got blonde hair. Of course. They're all in there with their kids or just on their own with their boyfriend oh, and the boyfriend God. snapping up the selfies. And <laughs> it's just like and they're on the ground. There's like a spot that says selfie here, and that's all they do. <sighs> and so like it might as well say narcissism here. Yeah. Step for narcissism here. Women with kids who still go for the Barbie thing. Those have got to be the Twilight moms. Hmm. Like you've seen, you can actually look up, just look up Twilight Moms, and it's some of the most cringe shit you've ever seen. The, the, you know, these women who are just, you wouldn't break if you saw them crossing the street because they'd probably blame you for it. Mm. Um, they're just, and they're disgusting, and they, they're holding up signs like, you know, Team Edward, Team Jacob, and I'm like, you're 50, and you're reading a teen book, yep. and you're standing in line. At eleven fifty nine, well, I so mean, that you can get the new book. I still read comic books, and I'm f- over fifty. But you know, I don't go to Disney. I don't give a shit about that stuff. Uh, comic books, well, th- at least they used to have you know good art, good messages. Not anymore. Heroism, not anymore. No, no. you have to go off brand if you want no. the good stuff. Twilight well, is literally see, uh, necrophilia. The, the creator of uh, what's it called? Uh, what's that comic book? Just he a couple days ago he came out and attacked it. The, they made a TV show out of it. Uh, the oh, Watchmen. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Alan Moore hates everything that's ever been made, 
from his work. So Alan Moore chiming in saying that he hates the newest thing that's been made from his work is just a record on repeat. Well, I, okay. So he even <laughs> hated the film? Is that what you're he saying? He hated the film. He hated V for Vendetta. He literally hates everything that he's ever had his name on that's ever been translated to the screen. Into a movie. He hasn't liked a single one of them. Like the movie Watchmen, I loved it. That was a great film. I, I just rewatched it like a few weeks ago. So. I did watch yeah. that one again. Yeah, it's been yeah, a that's a good point. I should probably watch it again. I loved it. I like Rorschach. Yeah, Rorschach. He's my favorite. He died yeah. like a champ. Yeah, don't end like him, though. What you, yeah. No, no. I mean, he, he, like, literally was like, I'd, I'd rather die than go against my uh, my honor. Well, well, that actor, Jack Earl Haley, because he was so good as Rorschach, that's the only reason I threw down money to go and see the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Oh, okay. Because he was Freddy Krueger in that. Oh, he was? And he's the only good thing about the movie. Everything else is shit. Hmm. <laughs> I always joked that it was funny that the director's name is Samuel Bayer because you're going to need a fucking bottle of aspirin after you get out of that <laughs> headache and eyesore. The, the Barbies have been sent, so there you go. All right. Ugh. The Barbies. Barbies. Oh, so th I didn't even see this before. The excuses. This ought to be good. Right, here we so go. what are the excuses for cheating? It was only lust. There we go. It's nothing like what you and I have, mm -hmm. which is worth less than lust, apparently. It's just in the head. So this must be for the emotional affairs. Mm -hmm. You've met him several times. They're your friend. We wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not even attracted to him. Oh, we've heard oh, that before. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're so not attracted to him. You just had to have your dick in his mouth so you could close your eyes and not look at his face. Right? <laughs> it's not really an affair. That's gaslighting. It's just a normal friendship. Neither of us are emotionally invested. It was just a one-time thing. Which obviously is more important to me than you. You hurt me first. Oh, oh yeah. I, I would say this this should be number one. You, you hurt so? me first. You cheated on me. When? Look, it's just games of projection. Like we've we've heard them all before, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, you and here it is. Trying. You stop trying, aka. I'm not happy. happy. Yeah, we grew apart. You didn't put in the effort. It's too late now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, Look, ugh. it's women want attention. If you talk to them constantly and you give them that attention, see, this is the thing I think that worked for me was like, if I'm talking to her like two, three, four hours a day, then she's super happy because she's getting all this attention. She doesn't even care about what I'm saying. She just cares that it's all this attention. Jinkin and she knows she's not going to get that attention from anybody else. You know, most guys after 10, 20 minutes of talking, they're done. Yeah. If you talk to him and give him the 23 dick, you're in like Flynn. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So, like, look, the, the thing is, I never had issues, like, never the issues with fidelity, as far as I knew, never any issues with regards to, like, uh, communications or intimate, like, all this stuff was there. My whole thing was, after a certain amount of time, like, after, you know, in a five-year relationship, after three and a half years... She started to make control moves on the relationship. She started like mo mo like trying to slowly w like take the reins of control, even though I, l I wanted equality. And I was always taught, you know, you want to be equal to the woman and this is how the world is. No. And then no. slowly they start. I'm like, no. Like, no. And, and, and then she made a power play. She miscalculated and I was gone. And then a year and a half later, she's coming back trying to get me again. Sling and I'm like, no. Sling back. Yep. Yep. Right. So. This is the this is the the same you know bullshit that I've I've always seen. So when I see you know all these all this projection and I see all you know this behavior like these women don't want to be with these men like these men are just like they have no one better they have no better option so they're stuck with these guys yep. and so now they someone better slightly better option has appeared in their life so now they're going in that direction. Well, they want the bill pair. Yeah. Well, for now, right until they find a better one. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, and social media has just compounded this problem t to infinity and beyond. Hmm. Because now, in addition to the mindset, now they have the reinforcement, the illusion of infinite variety. Oh my God, yeah. And, it, it, and they think it's never going to stop. I, I've actually seen videos, these OnlyFans twats, Saying like, well, you know, I'm just getting hotter every year, so I'm just going to keep getting hotter every year until I'm like 70, and I'm going to keep making all this money every month, and everybody loves me. Like, yeah, no. Kevin, Kevin Samuels was no. the champ at shooting those fuckers, those bitches in the feet. Uh, I mean, you're, you're done by the time you're 35 in most cases. Yeah. A lot of women start going south at 30. Yeah. 
if not sooner. Well, you know, it's really funny. It's like I, I'm paying attention to all these female musicians. And look, some of their music is getting better when they're in their 30s. But the views just dry up like they're cooch. Like, it's yep. just crazy. Well, it's because most singers now are just models using singing to further that career. Okay. Like, well, uh, half of these people that got big in the last decade or so, they have no talent whatsoever, but they look the part. That's why I say they're models, then they're just, they're, well, I just happen to sing. Well, with a ton of auto-tune and Photoshop and backup dancers and vocalists and everything to mask the fact that I actually can't do anything other than stand here and look at it. Oh okay, like, I'll give you an example. There's a, there's a singer named Mo. She did this, like the song Kamikaze that came out, I don't know, like seven, eight, nine years ago, whatever. She That video got like multiple billions of views, right? And now she's putting out music, maybe get a million views on a song. Like it's it, like you could, you could see this like go from a, like multiple billions to hundreds of millions to tens of millions to like one million. And now she's, yeah. you know, she's in her early to mid thirties. So... I guess nobody really liked her music. They were just there to, to look at her, and that's it. And yeah. a lot of women in Hollywood, when they get around 33, the roles dry up yep. until they get old, and then they're looking for a grandma or the, mm. the mean well, aunt or look something. Look at, look at what's-her-face, the one that attacked Peterson. Like, she's a sneaky weasel, right? Yeah, uh, Olivia Wilde. Yeah, like she, she's like, well, I'm not going to get any roles once I turn 38, 39, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to become the director, and then I'm going to cast myself in the film, mm. and then that way I get to keep <laughs> acting. Yeah, and I get to make the movies that I want to make. It's like but, if but, people actually go and see your shitty films, <laughs> like Hollywood's getting crazy. Well, if, if people don't, you just blame Peterson, and then someone oh, yeah, will yeah. feel ba- sorry for you. You'll make the next one. Yeah, then you'll get three woke tards to go and buy tickets for the front row, and then the rest of the theater's empty, and then they the all three of them. Just, just Peterson's an evil man. Yeah, they all it's fall like, asleep because oh, they OD it. on Soylent. Yeah, like Hollywood's getting creamed. <laughs> Like, look, the, 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 look, there's no, there's no artistry anymore. Like it's just, no. it's, I can't watch it. Like it's gotten to the point, like before it was like, I would still give it a try. Now I'm like, eh, no, I'm not even going to watch it. Okay. I've been dead. Yeah. Yep. I will, I will only go and see films in, in the theaters if they are released now by Paramount or Universal uh, of the major studios anyway. Okay. Every, th- got- every other studio has gone super woke. Yeah, the only- I, I just I will not give Disney any money, and they own half the fucking studios now. Yeah, so I'm out. And we're Warner Brothers, fuck them. Yep. So what I would do is look if 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 you know what I've been doing is I've been going back in time. So like I've been going from 2010 and before, yeah, you know, 2012, 2013, whatever. I've been going back and looking at movies that I haven't seen from that era, and then just going and you know sailing the high seas and getting co- copies of them and just watching them yeah and i've actually been fairly well rewarded by doing that hmm. because there's all these gems that i missed all those years ago yeah hmm. and, and when you you know expand it to you know foreign films you know Jeez. italian films of wow. the 70s especially you know i mean german films I, I mean sometimes if you're looking for a great american film that maybe didn't get a whole lot of play here for some reason I, what a good example uh, skin deep I want to say it was 1989 or 90. John Ritter, written and directed by Blake Edwards, did the Pink Panther movies, mm. 10. Phenomenal fucking movie. John Ritter at his absolute best. Not available here in HD at all. Wow. But you can get it from Germany. Ah. And the cover is even funnier. Hmm. In the American poster, it was John Ritter with just a bunch of ladies around him. Uh, the, the German poster is literally a condom hanging off of something <laughs> with a flower growing out of it. And John Ritter's like... <laughs> what the fuck? This is awesome. Why was this <laughs> poster in America? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? Yeah, if you guys haven't seen that movie, highly suggest it. It has one of the best lines from any movie ever. When he finally has his epiphany, figures out what's going on and how he's going to fix his life, he says, you're never going to believe this, but there is a God, and he's a gag writer. <laughs> <laughs> one of my all-time favorites. Love all right, all right. And, of course, John Ritter just being awesome. Especially no. when he beds down a, a, a female bodybuilder. And no. she gets climbs up on top of him, and she's like, how do you feel about that? I feel like Mrs. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like, I don't know. I mean, one of the main reasons for the show is trying to let the dudes out there know. Fuck out of here. Damn This flies. is going to happen to you. Yes. Uh, if you think, oh, yeah, it never happened to me, about you're out of your fucking mind. Yeah, especially in today's day and age, where all the women are princesses, mm-hmm. they all think they are entitled to all kinds of shit. 
and uh, it, it's just a matter of time. Yeah, I, I would say even 20 years ago, it would have been maybe a 50-50 prospect. But in the, in the age of social media, nope. it's almost guaranteed now. It's a done deal. And the, there's all kinds of simps out there sniffing behind these women just waiting to break off a piece. Uh, we did a video that is going to be released on Thursday on New Tech uh, about a 330-pound model dating a dude that will one day die of suffocation in her <laughs> fat we, folds. We, we covered um, that, yeah. And you look at the comments that are posted to her social media, and like, Queen, you're so beautiful. And it's all these dudes. Like, well, they probably got on. rid of all the bad ones, too. If you, if you look at my Twitter, there's a, there's a, there's a picture of a guy. Like the woman's like, oh, let me take a look if I can see it. Basically, he's like this simp that's <laughs> the, the stepdad. I, the, I'm, the, I'm the pregnant stepdad. And oh he's got God. like the soy face, and it's just—it's so pathetic. The Simstitute, the soy face. Yeah, the Simstitute. The foy face. Let's, let's see if I can find this. <laughs> let's see. And the, the, oh, I just put up this uh, picture a couple days ago with with, with zipper tits. Z- have you heard? Have you, heard? <laughs> you mean Elliot Page? <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. <laughs> I, I cannot believe that craziness that's taken place. Elliot Page. That's they're in that one new show on Netflix, right? Yeah, Umbrella yeah. Academy or something. No, like no, that. look, look, look. She was, she's. Well, you can't say she anymore, right? I can but, say whatever uh, I want. She. Her name is. But Ellen. it's so weird how they shoehorned the male character into like. It's just so weird. Like all the characters, are like, oh, I'm a woman, yeah. I'm a man now. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, go, now, go that, that was ahead. just yeah. it. That, like that's it, and the show continued. Yeah, you know, you could you could chisel your jaw and try to make it look more masculine. You can implant fake abs into your body. You're still a chick. But listen. It's going to take a season or two to kill her off so she's out of the out of the show. No, they're not going to kill her off. They better. They're keeping, they're keeping the character. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> there's, I think there's only one more season My of the God. show. For now, Netflix is hurting for cash, and they're just looking to put, put more money into the show that they can get money out of and uh, keep going. Pretty much all they have now, Stranger Things, mm-hmm. Cobra Kai. That's it. Didn't that. the new season come out recently? Yes. Was it any good? Phenomenal. Actually. Okay, so I, I would say it is the best season of Cobra Kai since season one, and I would say the same about Stranger Things. Stranger Things season four, fantastic. Yeah, I've I still it. can't figure out why they waited to release that last episode, like like a few months later. But no, it was, I was I, I loved that. I thought it was great. Yeah, they yeah. brought it back. It was that was the fourth season, right? Yes. Yeah, the third season kind of lost me with all the retro mall ease stuff. It was just like, yeah, oh, no. two and three were just. I mean, yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's fine, you know. I didn't really have any desire to go back and rewatch them. And then I see season four. I'm like, okay, these guys have found their mojo again. This is some good shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're they're probably trying. Like they probably said, you know, like they they felt shame for like being exploited, right? So yeah. Well, like I, all I could say is. There's going to be major fucking layoffs. Oh, yeah. Because they have not been making money because they're making this stupid shit. Uh, Netflix is laying people off. Yep. Facebook is laying people off. Uh, I mean, it's Netflix. Yep. Disney Plus, despite being one of the newest streaming services, is already hemorrhaging subscribers. Well, was it, uh, was it not Peacock? Was it, which is the one, the Paramount one that they have Star Trek on? Is that uh, the one? Paramount Plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, who's watching the Star Trek, new Star Trek? I don't understand. I'm like, not. I'm not. I watch The Orville instead. It's better. And, and they, they got three seasons <laughs> and they're not even sure they're going to make a fourth. I'm like, what are you people retarded? Like, make more of that. Like, people are watching it for sure they're watching it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you have a show that's making money and you want to make money, maybe you should. Keep making the fucking show. Yeah, maybe you should well, focus on the story and not it poll. Well, here's the thing: the problem with the Orville is like they've gone, they kind of did a lot of the Star Trek: The Next Generation like look and feel, similar storylines. They built on those storylines, but there's no real place to take the show, right? Like, mm-hmm. there's no new like they've they've already kind of they've ex- explained all the enemies and they've kind of explained. You know, they've elaborated as much as they can. They need to bring in some new alien races that kind of make sense. They need to they need to do something new because the, yeah. otherwise yeah. it's going to get dry season four. So maybe yeah, and I, I think that uh, what's his face? Uh, Seth MacFarlane understands yeah. that he understands this and he knows that if he pushes it just to make make another season without actually having anything to, It'll to talk about, it, it's yeah. going to be shit. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's a dude who's been canceled several times by his own damn network. I mean, Family Guy was canceled twice, and it's still on the air wow. after 20-some-odd years. Because people recognize they can make money off of it. It's, yeah. e- it's easy to go to an executive producer and be like, you want money in those pockets? It's like, yeah. Like, let's go. Yeah. Let's make it. Yeah. Well, actually, it was it was fans doing letter writing campaigns that got it put back on the air. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. I know that uh, Lucifer got moved to Netflix. Netflix, yeah. And then it got better after it went to yeah. Netflix. I don't know if they canceled that one or they're going to No, that they officially ended it. Okay. And the ending season was fantastic. Okay. Really well, good. I have to get caught up on it then. Yeah, Negasonic Teenage Warhead plays his daughter. So Nice. <laughs> nice. No, but, but the thing is, like, look, it's the thing is, like, we're watching the sci-fi, but there's nothing that's really pushing the envelope, right? Like, it's all kind of... Like, remember back in the 90s, you, you had, like, the Star, Star Trek was new. Like, you know, they had all new alien braces and new scenarios. The yeah. writing was fantastic. Even even the you know the the, the naughties you had like Battlestar Galactica like where is this you know where's the show that's like innovative today like I don't see any of that well they can't if they have to include everyone yeah that's really if you give these if you give them a, a box to check you know you have to have this you have to have that but okay well where's the room for creativity you just took it all away but the, but correct. Star Trek had all of those boxes checked. It right? did, but it wasn't good enough. Yeah, it wasn't good enough. It still doesn't reflect the world we live in today. <clears throat> See, that's the problem, yep. and, and that's what the issue is, why no one gives a flying fuck about the new Lord of the Rings series. It's uh, because that, Lord of the Rings has a fantasy world that is not <laughs> supposed to reflect the world that like, we live I can't, in. I've gotten to the point where I will not even watch shows and, and, and channels that talk about how bad it is anymore. Like it used to be for a while, I'd be like, I'm going to watch this to see how bad it is. Like not the show, but watch the review. (laughs) I'm like, I don't even have the time to care about watching how bad this thing is. Yeah, like, like, shit I'm just, Nobody watches so it, shit I think the woke oh, is just going to go away because people are just going to be like, I'm not going to watch. I'm just, I'm done. I, like, I watched I, I, half of one show of, of the new Lord of the Rings horse shit. And you were out. And I was like, Wow. What a steaming pile of dog shit full of maggots. Th- that is a really expensive pile of shit. It, and you know what? what? They fucking deserve it. They do. And I hear they're actually going to do season two. <laughs> Are they out of their fucking mind? They just flushed $1.7 billion down the toilet. And now they want to chase it with another $1.7 billion? Uh, it, listen, if there's... No, well, it, it'll probably... Like the next season will probably be five hundred thousand. Well, it'll probably be like uh, like the second season of Walking Dead because you know, they went over budget the first season, so we got to take the guy who actually you know brainstormed this thing that became a fucking ratings juggernaut, and we're gonna throw him aside because we want it to be cheaper. Mm-hmm. And then they lost a ton of audience. Mm-hmm. You're idiots. Well, look, look, that's been slowly bleeding audience for like over 10 years but that thing's been yeah. on forever right uh, over 10 years now yeah i haven't like, watched much ga- what about the game two. of thrones the new game of thrones any good i've heard that it is actually i have not watched it as of yet so yeah house of the dragon but, right? but i can't watch yeah. it because i know how it ends with the fucking like the way they butchered the ending right for the for, yeah. the, for the other show yeah. yes see they're, they're, that, this is what they're doing they're they're destroying future audiences by destroying like you know a couple episodes all they had to do is like do now, something are you, proper. Are, have you been tracking what's going on with the new Andor sh- uh, show on Disney? I have no interest in watching it. No like, one does. Uh, but the thing is, like, they made this show, and no one wants to watch it because Disney has driven off all of the Star Wars fans. They're gone. Yeah. They're gone. They literally pissed away four yeah. billion dollars. And, and without well, the no, no, they got fans. their money back when they made all those nasty prequels, right? Like our sequels, right? <laughs> no, they they well, uh, destroyed. No, it. they spent as much money making them as they did getting back. Yeah. Well, look, so, they they opened up the theme park rides. They sold merchandise. That's hemorrhaging they got, money. They, they yeah. made their money back. Trust me. No, that the Galaxy's Edge was losing money from get go. That's why, and it was closed down during <laughs> the entire lockdownerism uh, period. So that's a huge, huge problem. <laughs> <for them>. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, we better get to some super chats. We're going to be out. Yeah, it's nine thirty, so we're going to actually we're going to take a little break so Pop can empty his squirrel bladder. I'm okay, sure we all got to hit the pisser. We're going to jump to new tech, start reading some super chats. But before we do that, I do want to give a big shout out to fellow war hoarder because he sent in a one hundred dollar donation. And he says, please share this information with links at the bottom so the world may see the faces as well as two short biographies. This evening marks the 10th anniversary of the combat operations loss of a PSYOPs officer or PSYOPs soldier and a civil affairs soldier in Afghanistan. Yeah, I remember that. I was not present when it happened. 
I was elsewhere, but one of my oldest friends from the army was there when it happened. These men were murdered by a Taliban insider threat who was not properly vetted into the Afghan local police forces. Staff Sergeant Kashif Memon of the 95th Civil Affairs Brigade and Sergeant Clinton Ruiz of the 9th Psychological Operations Battalion. Please see the links below. Links are from the official Army Special Operations Forces Official Office of the Command Historian. Take a shot for these fallen comrades here. I, I, I remember that, too. Yep, I'll throw these up here on the screen for you. There they are. And the other gentleman here. So Now, I remember after that happened, we had uh, new TTPs, and then uh, they went through all the stuff. Don't ever do this. And don't ever. Listen, civil affairs was the most dangerous job in the Army for a short time because it was run by a bunch of non-combat individuals and they would make predictable journeys and they were carrying lots of money and, and expensive equipment and they, they were getting attacked all the time. Because when I was standing up the 414, I was specifically asked by the battalion commander, I'm like, you need to, you need to get me some shooters in here. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean, sir? He goes, well, I know you could, you could train shooters to do paperwork, but trying to teach paperwork junkies to shoot is, in, is impossible. And I'm like, you're fucking right there. <laughs> Pop, when did you retire? Yeah, they forced me out in 2018, which I think was good. He was medically retired. I was medically retired. Okay. I fought it tooth and nail, and it just... It is what it is. It is what... It, well, when you have the commander of Fort Drum call you into their office and go, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing this? We're not going to fuck you. You're going to be fine. <laughs> uh, Big Chad the Mad Lad wants to know, how old are you, Sandman? You sound like a 12-year-old. I've been listening to you for years, and I want to know. <laughs> yeah, my, my voice gets higher with, with age, so it's great. <laughs> As opposed to, uh, what's his face, Tom Likas, who seems to be like aging to like 99, even though he's, like I don't know, he's in his 60s or something. <laughs> I like Tom Likas. Yeah, no, I, I like his stuff too, but he went a little bit batty like, a couple of years ago. I don't know what, what happened. Of course he did. Uh, maybe he got the coof shot. Mm. So, uh, what is your your answer there? Or do you want to? Do you give an approximation? I'm I'm the double four. There you go. The double four. Double there you four. go. Double four. All right. All right. So we're going to take a little break here. If you're on YouTube, take a look for the links in the chat to follow us over to New Tech. We will be reading your super chats there. In the meantime, refill your menageries, empty your squirrel bladders, and we'll see you in five. All right. <laughs> 